So I've got this um, first person view. Um, there's a bit of the procedural animation for the legs and all this stuff. Um, then you have the third person version. And I'll just add in the test area again. And this one uh, lets you look around as normal. But then if you kind of look too far into the ground, it um, brings the cl camera closer. So it tries to not clip into things, basically. Um, uh, it's tricky to get it to work. It works fine like that, but it's tricky to get it to work if you're really close. Because there's just not enough room for the camera to um, get out of the way. But um, I'll be showing how to do that kind of uh, logic like that. Right, so now let's adapt all of that. We can, uh, Because we have uh, invisible things, we can turn off preview invisibility and show hide preview invisibility. And then we can move that around just fine because that always teleports over there anyway. Um, so I'm going to put it over here. So we're going to adapt this rig so that instead of it being first person, it will be third person, just like a normal a normal thing. Um, yeah, so let's go here. Uh, right, so let's scope into here and into that group and turn on the grid and align it to that object with L1 and triangle. And now I'm going to use precise move to move the camera out like this. So now we just have a wider view, but the rest of it just works as normal. So now we see a headless puppet. Um, because we uh, made the, the head invisible. Um, we can scope in here and make the neck and head visible again. And that puppet will work as normal. It kind of looks a bit derpy right now, but it works absolutely fine. And the camera follows along, but then you have this uh, issue where it can go behind things, and now we can't see what we're doing. Um, and it can go inside of uh, objects as well, without a care. Without a care, not even thinking. Um, so we can set up some stuff to fix that. So we'll go into this um, group again. So this group has the, we do that, it has the box and the camera. And we're going to add a chip in here uh, into the center. And then we're going to open up that. And we'll add to it a laser scope. So first I'll demonstrate what a laser scope does. I'll turn off the grid. Um, if you just have a laser scope in the scene, when you select it or tweak it, you can see it's gizmo and you can move it around and stuff. So if I just dr uh, grab that, that moves the, the starting point of the scope and we can drag the, um, the stalk at any point. And this one affects the, the arrow affects the actual core range. So if it hits something within this range, then it will send a one. But then you have this other range, which is the fall off. So if it hits it near the end, it will be closer to zero. And if it hits it near this end, it will be closer to one, but it will be this range of percentage. So then we can tell it what to actually care about. So we only really, we don't care if it's uh, collidable, but we care if it's visible. So now if I put it into this, this thing is visible. So then it's sending out a signal, and you can see it on the face here. So if I just move this over here. So uh, during the fall off, it's got this percentage signal. And then in the core, it's always 100%, as you can see by the bar on the face of the gadget. So we're going to use one of those to figure out how close we are from the camera point to, or from the uh, the center of the puppet, to the uh, first visible thing it hits. So we can grab this laser scope and we'll use the grid to make sure it's straight. So we'll use the grid and then scope in here again. Turn that bit off. And use L1 and triangle to, to align the grid. And then we can drag out the stalk 
There we go. To point in the direction of the uh, point towards the camera. So we can use. Uh, we actually want a fall off to go all the way to behind the camera. So now, um, if stuff is if visible objects are found here, it will it will start affecting the camera basically. Um, so what do we want it to do though? Yeah, so we're going to use a keyframe in the animation uh, animate section. We can use a keyframe and you just stamp it down and it starts recording um, pretty much anything we do. So we can move this closer over here and now when this is powered and we can click on it to preview it when this is powered then it will move the camera closer but also there's a special property where if I use a value slider for example and plug it in you can half power it to make it half do the thing that it recorded so if I power it to half, it's moving the camera to halfway towards what it recorded. And if I power it to full, then it's all the way to what it's recorded. Meanwhile, we have this laser scope, which gives us a percentage of how far along here it's found something and hit something. So we can just plug that into the keyframe. And now as the laser scope finds something closer to the puppet that's in the way, it'll move the camera even closer and closer. So let's try that. So if we go over here, then it just snaps us forward. Like that. And if we go over here and kind of back into the wall, at a certain point, it'll the camera will still clip into the wall, but it will do its best to kind of stay in front of it. And same if you look down, is like that. And we can adjust this so that uh, the fall off is a bit bigger so it's more sensitive to things as they get closer so like that. Ah, the one thing is the laser scope is currently looking for visible objects and the the uh, sculpt of the player's head and things is visible so it's actually sensing that sometimes so if we turn make it not look for the friend label then we can say that the the entire puppet is the friend label and now it will ignore the puppet entirely so it shouldn't freak out so much there you go like that and then we can give it some uh, easing uh, the keyframe when you start powering it it takes this amount of time to get up to whatever power you gave it and this amount of time when you make the power go lower so if you made that really long and that quite short then it will kind of transition better like that um, like that and it will still go back if we've got a gap and so on <laughs> those arms are so funny I'm going to turn off the, that pose I'd like to thank Evil Key Mao, VGA Port Authority, the common people, and all of my other supporters for making this tutorial possible. Check out tapjars.com to find out how you can support me in helping Dreams creators. Thanks for your consideration, and I'll see you in the next one.